Now that we understand the flow of dot loop, how to use our dashboard, how to create a loop, let's actually create some files and send them off to our clients for signature. So first we will start with the listing documents themselves. Now there are two strategies and I'm gonna show you the best one. First is you could open each form one by one, fill them out and hit share, which sends that to the client. But I wanna show you a better way that saves you more time. So if you hit this little checkbox here, this will check box for everything in this folder. Now, we do not need to send offer instruction sheet to our, our seller. And let's pretend that we are not gonna charge them tra the transaction fee. We are gonna pay that out of our commission. So we only need these forms, but you click this, you uncheck the ones you don't need. And now with all these forms, I hit open. Now there's a strategic reason of why I did that. So when it opens like this, an autofill box will pop up. Uh, I don't know why I didn't open right there, so I just hit autofill, but I've opened five documents at once. So whatever I put into this autofill pop-up window will autofill to all those forms at the same time. That way I don't have to keep entering the same information one by one into every single form. Everything on this pop-up window is optional, but the more you fill out, the better. So let's go ahead and just make up an example. So let's say our seller is Taylor. Taylor Greist, she's the seller. I will hit add person. I always uncheck send intro email. We don't need to bog them down with over and above emails. You don't even need to add phone number, street name. Now, if you do, remember these people will be saved in your people tab on dot loop. So kind of like your phone contacts. So you could input this information, but at a bare minimum, you need one email per person. So even if you have a husband and wife, you need two separate emails. This is dot loop security feature to prevent one person for signing on both people's behalf if only one email is used. So one email per person. So Taylor Grice, and I put her email. And this is a bare minimum to enter a person into this loop. So now I hit add person. We, we made up the street name. So you can enter it here. It will pull from the MLS again. So if I start typing one, two, three, it starts popping up different options. But if I don't wanna worry about that, I can just go down here, one, two, three, Main Street. We'll go Nashville and we'll go Tennessee. Zip code, I'm just gonna make one up. County, Davidson. And I'm gonna skip down here and hit autofill. Now you can see that some boxes have turned yellow. That is autofilled information. It's always good just to quickly peek and make sure you put in the right information here for the autofill, but on all those forms, and it is now input that information. Now you can also see in dot loop that anywhere that might need something filled out already has boxes set up for you. You don't have to add boxes. You don't have to customize these forms. We've already spent the hours and hours of editing these documents. So that way they're ready to go when you're creating a listing loop or a buyer loop. So for example, address of owner, let's say Taylor lives somewhere else. She lives at 465 Main Street in Nashville, Tennessee, three, 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 three. All right, so we'll go down here and we'll fill out all this information if it was a listing agreement. Now, I'm not gonna go and fill everything out in this example video because I'd wanna keep it rather short, um, but I will note different boxes for you. So listing price, for example, let's say they wanna list this house at 500,000. Now, when you do that, it will actually auto-populate the written out dollar amount here. If you see anything with a little calendar here, that is actually a calendar. So you can click that and it will load a calendar. If you don't want to pick a date like this, then don't click the calendar. Just click in the box and then you can actually start typing the date that you need. Now, down here, you'll notice this. This is considered a checkbox. So you will actually have to check if this applies. So that's, that's a checkbox. We'll go down here. Let's say this is a 5.5% listing. Let's say we're offering 3% to a buyer's agent, regardless of which MLS they're part of. We'll cover contracts in a separate video series. This is more just dot loop, using it, getting comfortable with it. So we will scroll down here. Now I skipped a lot, so make sure you're filling everything out. It should say Taylor sign here. And when it's shared off to Taylor, this makes it really easy because it will skip down to where assigned boxes are for Taylor. Now, if it does not say that, and it's just a seller sign here, you can make 
her life easier by clicking this box and up here is a drop down menu. So this is the assignment tab. So if I want to get her attention and say, I need you to sign here and it's a quicker signing session, then you can assign to Taylor. Now it says Taylor sign here. If it's the wrong person, you just click it and you can hit no one or you could hit anyone. So just make sure these are assigned correctly to the right person. Since Taylor only needs to sign once, we'll just put her here. As long as this one doesn't say Taylor sign here, we're good. Um, also for yourself as a real estate agent, you will notice that it says broker or licensee authorized by broker. You are allowed to sign listing agreements. You don't need our approval. Uh, the broker also does not have to sign that. So if you can't sign, click it, drop down menu, hit anyone, and now I can hit sign now and it will create an electronic signature for me and I hit accept and then my signature automatically is signed. So here's my awesome signature, adopt and sign, now it is signed. So that's just a quick shortcut. If you need to sign somewhere, you can just hit assign field, anyone. And then when it's orange, just click sign now and you're good to go. Let me assign that back to no one. Next, we will scroll down. So it says Taylor, Taylor, good to go. Disclaimer, so it says Taylor sign here, that's okay. Taylor, listing licensee, I will need to sign here. So I will again, drop down anyone. I will hit sign now, good to go. This should be checked. Remember it's a checkbox. This should be filled out. We'll scroll down. And now this is a disclosure form. So in a separate contract video, we will cover this, but with seller's disclosures, we do not fill those out. Those are entirely for the seller to fill out to the best of their knowledge. If they don't know, just tell them to put what they think is the best answer. So they could put yes, no, unknown, but we don't touch this form. So we scroll through, Taylor sign here, and we'll need to add a signature box to this MLS sheet. Now I could be going out of order. You may not have this MLS sheet right now, and that's okay. You may have these other documents and you can send those off first and then work on the listing next and send that off to the seller later. Uh, just for this example, we already have it. Now, notice I added that signature box. Well, if you come up here to add, you can add signature boxes, initial boxes, text box, and you can adjust the size. You can even adjust the size on initials or signatures. You just can't with dot loop overlap different items that you've added. It will not allow that. That way it keeps people from signing over top or editing text. So that way they're individual fields. You can also add a checkbox. If you add a checkbox, remember to check it. But basically dot loop lets you fully customize forms however you need to. And then when you are ready with the form, you can hit save and share. If you're not gonna share with your client, you can just hit save. That will save the forms. And then once it hits saved, you can back out and we'll go back to your loop. But in this instance, we will hit share. It will have Taylor. It will show that there's seven boxes assigned to her. And right now her permission level is can sign. If you need to give them more permission, you hit this little dropdown and you can hit can fill and sign. So this would be a really good example because there's a seller's disclosure that we need the seller to fill out and hit all those little check boxes. Well, they need permission to fill and sign. Almost never do I give a client access to edit in private. This allows them to add the strike throughs, add the check boxes, add the text box. And clients seem to all of a sudden become attorneys overnight when you say can edit in private. So you wanna do can fill and sign or can sign. And if they have any questions or need any changes, you can handle that and reshare these documents to them. So let's say can fill and sign. Also, another quick tip is if your client has trouble with technology or signatures electronically, you can hit attach PDF to email. Now, what that does is when I share this to them, they will get an email from Dotloop to say, hey, you have some documents to sign. It will also attach all these documents as a PDF to that email. So that way, if your client is not good with technology, they could just download that PDF and they could manually sign. Maybe they print them off, sign it, scan it back to you, and you can upload it back into Dotloop. That does work. This is a helpful feature, or if you share it with other agents, to attach to PDF because not everybody has dot loop and sometimes this makes it easier when sharing documents. So we will hit share and it will load. And now it says these documents have been shared waiting on others. I will hit done. I will go back. And now we can see the status of this. So it says waiting on others. And if you hover over, it says still waiting on Taylor to sign. Well, now let's jump into the next video after these have been signed.